In this tutorial, we are going to demonstrate the new Photoshop 2021 Neural Filters, where you can choose the Smart Portrait options and change the appearance of a portrait for someone that you've just taken a photo of. Here's how you do it. To launch Photoshop 2021, choose an image of your choice. This is an image of me at a wedding. Go up to the top, go to Filter, Neural Filters, and it'll bring up an option on the side here. Now you've got a couple of different options at the time of this recording, some skin smoothing and style transfer. But we're going to jump straight to this kind of beacon looking icon and it's uh, beta filters. And it'll give you various different options at the time of this recording. What is in beta, uh, what you can actually show some interest in as well. Uh, but we're going to concentrate on this video for smart portrait. Now, if we toggle this on, it gives you lots of different options that you can play around with here. Now, some of these are really, really good and some of them are pretty creepy. So I'm going to give you a quick demonstration as we go through. Say, for instance, you've got a photo, a group photo of everyone and you've got a couple of people that are looking off into a different direction or not smiling or doing something. What you can do is you can click be happy to make them smile. Now, uh, if you drag it up to the right hand side, it makes them smile a little bit more. It's processing at the moment because it's all kind of cloud based. And there we go, we can see that I'm smiling a little bit more. It's uh, it's made my teeth a bit, a bit larger, which is a bit odd. As I say, some of these effects can be a bit strange. If I drag it down, then I can actually almost close my mouth entirely and drag it all the way up to the top big huge smile so I put that back to standard uh, surprised you can give kind of a surprise look or drag it down not so surprised um, make someone angry if you really want to kind of look almost confused like I'm shouting or something here Some odd, some odd things. It'd have to work well with the, the, the correct kind of photo. Uh, now, down here, subject's facial range. What it can do is it looks at the image itself. It knows where the face is. And then you can actually make it an older shape face. So I can make myself look pretty old, uh, which is kind of creepy. Uh, I can start to see some weird artifacts going on around the shirt and the neck so you would have to kind of repaint that back in again with Photoshop uh, or I can drag it down to how I normally work, look and uh, go even younger so it's, it's not just doing the face itself it's actually changing the hairstyle um, and how grey the hair is or not also, again, it's, it looks like it's doing some weird stuff with the shirt here. So that's facial age. Now, gaze is something that I'm particularly interested in. If I'm taking shots of a wedding or a portrait and you have, say, five or six people and then you've got one person that's gazing off to the left, uh, so you take a few more and then you've got another person gazing off to the right, it can be difficult to overlay and there's a little bit of work and processing to overlay those images and uh, clone those right people into the right photo so that everyone's looking in the same direction. Now with gaze, what you could do is check it and for instance, if you have someone gazing off to the right, you can actually drag that back and it makes it look to the camera. So in this instance, I can actually gaze it off to the left, center or the right. Very clever, very, very clever indeed. Uh, the hair thickness is pretty good. So you've gone out and uh, you've got a couple of pictures and haven't got a haircut. You can literally just change the hair thickness down and make the hair shorter. Really, really cool. Uh, very strange and extremely powerful. It's making a little bit of a halo around the edges, but not so much that someone will be able to tell what's going on. You may have to zoom in a little bit later to clean this up. Uh, but some really nice effects here. 
Uh, again, the other way, I can make it really thick. Uh, looks a bit 80s there. I'm not sure if I like that. Uh, head direction is also another good thing. Again, if you have multiple people in a shot and you've got one person that's looking, physically looking in another direction with their head turned, you can use this to change it back up so they're pretty much central or fit everyone else's head. So if we check on head direction, uh, it's currently centered at the moment. If I drag this up a bit, can then you can then see I'm kind of gazing off to the to my left on the on the image. A bit more. Or change it the other way. Very, very clever. Light direction is also good. Um, let's just say you've got a family portrait and there was one particular person that couldn't make it and you've done your absolute best to try and put that person back in using Photoshop uh, manually just to show that everyone was all there. But it was obviously taken at another time and you've cloned it back in and the lighting's all wrong and that doesn't quite work out. So what you can do is change the light direction on that particular face and if you slide down you can change the light direction coming in from the left or the right so yeah that's that can be really useful and then you have some mask feathering features um, let's just say let's go to head direction mask feathering basically can aid with that you can choose what is going on around the edge of the head if we put this all the way up you can see that it's it's feathered a little bit out you don't really want that too much because we've got some nice sharp lines there so mask feathering should be should be further down really to to help define those edges if you're doing portraits it makes it a little bit more natural so yep yeah, that's a very quick feature on the new 2021 smart portrait feature